Hey friend, this question is from a YouTube viewer, I.B. Soren. He says, Paul Mac, I am currently trying to figure out how to make and use a barking spud. The YouTube videos showing how to forge a barking spud from scratch seem to be learning themselves as they are making one. I am not a blacksmith, and the few I know are not interested in making one unless I can provide a vintage example. I have resorted to converting a Central Forge 4-inch scraper slash chopper with wood handle from Harbor Freight into a barking spud. I'm suspicious that the few YouTube videos on how to sharpen and use a barking spud are individuals trying to figure it out like me and don't have a clue. Does a wise and resourceful person like you, well, that's very kind of you to say, however inaccurate, does a wise and resourceful person like you know? Thank you for the many informative and entertaining videos. Uh, yes, uh, I'd be sore. And based on what I see of the picture uh, on the of the Harbor Freight uh, scraper chopper, it looks like it would work fine. Uh, you just, I, I can't tell what the, the sharp edge looks like. I'm assuming it's got a bevel on one side. If not, that's what I would do is take a grinder of some kind, put that scraper in a vise and put a, and grind a nice, maybe a, I don't know, quarter inch bevel on it, something like that. About, you know, about something about that angle, you know, kind of like that right there. I don't know what, what, how many degrees that is. But I'd put it, that angle on it, and, and don't get it too hot. Don't um, go slow with it. Uh, take your time. Be patient. Don't get it too hot or put uh, temper in it or, or take temper out of it. And uh, you should end up with a, a pretty good tool. It looks like it's got some weight on it. To me, that's the key is something that has a little bit of weight on it makes for a better scraper. When you're scraping and using that tool, you want to put the bevel side down against the, the bark that you're scraping. Now, occasionally on hardwoods that is still kind of green and still hanging on to the pole, if you're peeling hardwoods, I would sometimes to get the, to get the peel started, I might turn the bevel up just to get it started, the bark coming up, and then turn it back down to, to finish the scrape. But don't think that a barking spud is the only way to peel the pole. There are other ways uh, to peel a pole. Uh, a lot of people like to, they gravitate toward the uh, the draw knife, you know, especially bigger draw knives that were made just for peeling poles. Those work fine. I have used with success uh, broad axes, especially if the tree if the tree I'm peeling is still a tree and not cut down yet uh, and still standing. You can at least head high if you put that broad axe at just the right angle. Find that sweet spot. And you can go down and peel that, peel that bark right off as the tree is standing. The standing tree makes a good holder. There's a tool that I found. I guess I found this at an auction. It looks pretty old. Somebody took, this is an, from an old buggy axle. Uh, here's the threads for the wheel. And they took a buggy axle and then it looks like they, in a forge, they hammered this down a little flatter, put some holes in it, and then found a, a sheet of flat iron cut out. They put the, the bevel on the flat iron. They riveted that flat iron on there. And this is stout. This is a heavy dude. And once you get it going, it almost peels itself. So this, this is one of my favorite peelers to use. You know, you can also take a, I think I've got one oh, over here. I did have. I don't know what happened to it. One of those edgers, you know, it looks like a hoe or a concrete mixer that's uh, turned upright like this, and it's for edging sidewalks, you know, for city dwellers to edge their sidewalks with. You can take those and put a bevel on it, get it sharp, and use those. The only deal about those, they work, they work fine, the only deal is there's not a lot of weight, and so you end up putting a little more, you know, energy into, into getting the peel started. Based on my anecdotal research, for whatever that's good for. Most uh, old time farmers just used whatever was at their disposal for peeling poles, just whatever they had. I tell you, you know, one, of the, one of the best things I have found um, for peeling a pole, and I found this by accident. I was at an auction. It was a rainy, rainy day. I was there to actually buy a sorghum mill that was for sale, which I did, but 
laying on the ground in the mud. Everybody was walking over this thing. And when I first saw it, I looked at it and said, I know what that's for. It's just almost intuition. It was a, uh, it had the appearance of a draw knife, but it was very, very homemade. It's just a section, if you can see that, it's just a section of an old crosscut saw on the end. And they uh, filed the teeth off or cut the teeth off. And um, they actually used the backside. They probably put a slight bevel on the backside of this crosscut saw. And they, these look like sweet gum or uh, elm saplings they cut and uh, cut a slit in them and put it up, drilled hole in there and a nail is that a yeah a nail is holding these in, this in on, on both sides and made handles made a little draw knife the beauty is unlike a regular draw knife this has a curve to it and so you end up peeling more of the bark off more of the diameter of the pole with uh, every turn this actually is the best tool for peeling a pole I've ever found and since then um, I've seen others of these. I, there's one hanging on the museum here in our county, uh, Heritage House Museum. Um, but this is probably the best thing I've found for peeling a pole. It, it'll be my favorite uh, farm tool one day. I hope all that helps. I'll be soaring. Uh, maybe you'd like to join in the discussion about peeling poles. If so, just leave your comment in the comment section below. Maybe you got a question about it leave that there. You could have a question about another video on the Farmhands Companion channel. Just go to that video. Go find it. Look for it. And leave your question in the comment section below that video. If it's a good question, I'll try to answer it uh, on upcoming episodes of the Q&A show. And remember, share these videos. It helps so very much. Until next time, I'm Paul Mack. Thank you for watching. I'll talk at you again later. Richard Royals, 1423, thank you for the information. God bless. Next time I'm at an auction, I'm going to buy one if there is one. You're going to buy a scythe at the auction? Uh, you better hope I'm not there. <laughs> Mike Russell, 701, always love your videos, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Used a scythe once, dot, 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 was not a great experience. Oh, man. Videos almost make me want to try again. Almost.